When you think about the Olympics, what do you think of? It's the world coming together for humanity. And with the 2024 Olympics coming to Paris, it is said to be the largest event ever hosted in France. Now, as amazing as all this is, there's a dark side to the Olympics that no one really knows about. No Olympic Games since 1960 has ever come under budget, and almost none have ever turned a profit. It's made cities like Athens, Montreal, and Rio bleed for decades. And now that the Games are being held in Paris, well, the same happened here. Yeah. You think we're gonna make a video essay about the Paris Games from our little comfy desk in New York? No, let me take over. The cost of hosting the Olympics has been compared to disasters like pandemics and earthquakes and tsunamis and war because of the debt and waste that has accrued through it. So in this video, we'll talk about why cities are even bidding on the Olympics in the first place. We'll talk about the massive changes that Paris is undergoing and try to understand how the Parisians feel about the Olympics because apparently, a recent poll shows that 47% of French people believe the country is ready, while 52 feel like they're unprepared for the Paris Games. So let's put that to the test. Lining up the whole river with bleachers. So fascinating. <laughs> Mama, we made it. So given all those negatives, why do cities even bid on the Olympics in the first place? Well, before I answer that, the first thing I want to do is introduce the main character of this whole plot, the International Olympic Committee. Simply put, the IOC manages the Olympics, and they have two goals. The first being, make sure the Olympics happen. And the second, make sure that everyone who's involved is happy. Tax across the last 60 years, no Olympic Games has ever stayed on budget. Taxpayers could be on the hook for $875 million for an Olympic project that wasn't supposed to cost them anything. In April, unemployment rose to 11.2%. Okay, well, that second goal isn't passing with flying colors, but that's because that isn't the IOC's main priority. They need to make sure that the Olympics happen. So they pitch cities with three major claims. Number one, the IOC claims that the Olympics will bring more national pride. It's no surprise that when the Olympics comes to your city, your culture is put on the big stage for the whole world. For example, the 1964 Tokyo Olympics symbolized Japan's recovery from World War II. Or the 2008 Beijing Olympics, which showcased China's rapidly growing economy. And here in Paris, where the 2024 Olympics is exactly 100 years since they last hosted it, showing that France has been a superpower for the last century. Okay, secondly, the IOC claims that the Olympics will bring in a ton of tourists. From athletes to media personnel to fans, the Olympics should bring in everything that is relevant to the local economy. And number three, the IOC claims that the Olympics will improve the city. Think about the construction of new facilities, the upgrades to transportation, and all the new buildings that come with the Olympics. Basically, here's motivation to sign all those billion dollar contracts that cities have been procrastinating for decades. Are you catching some sarcasm with these three sales pitches that I'm mentioning from the IOC? Yeah, that's on purpose, but First, I'm in Paris, so let's talk to some Parisians about how they feel about the 2024 Olympics. Bada bing, bada boom. Oh yeah! I'm getting pumped, let's talk to some French people. <laughs> All right, what is your name? My name is Bibin. Okay. Yeah, Bibin. Do you think you could write something down for me in French? Yeah, sure. On here? Thank <laughs> you. <Yeah. laughs> Yeah. Roast, roast and roast. No, oh, no, no, you're good. See, this looks beautiful. Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> this one, do you think you can make the Olympics bigger? Yes. So that everything in the Olympics. Yes, I think I can. Shout out, Sammy. I don't know what we would do with you right now. <laughs> you just answered to a simple Instagram DM, and now he's our translator. I'm, I'm doing location scouting and everything. Yeah. Uh, can you say what's on this? Can you say it? Venez, parlez avec moi des Jeux Olympiques. 
You forgot the liaison. Les non, Jeux Olympiques. Jeux Olympiques. Exactement. Je suis américain. For our first interview, we could not get luckier as a business owner next to the town square of the Olympics was willing to talk with us. So what is your name and what do you do? Uh, me, I'm uh, Avram. I'm the director of this restaurant. Awesome. And then this area, it's pretty touristy, right? So yeah, yeah, you are in the center of Paris. Are you excited for the Olympics? Uh, at the start of the year, yes. But uh, the closer we get, uh, the closer we get, the less I'm excited because there's a lack of information and I feel like we are not very prepared. Do you think Paris is ready for the Olympics? Mm, yeah, I think so. Uh, that's that's look like. Maintenant, on sait pas tout. On verra bien. He's like, we'll see. Uh, he, he's confident. He's like, okay, this is going well, but we'll see. That's as much as. That's his level of confidence. Yeah, yeah. Can you explain the QR codes, the the ability of like walking from arrondissement to arrondissement? Yeah. Alors nous, on a réussi à le faire pour toute l'équipe. For security reasons, there's a QR code that everyone needs to have to walk around the different districts of Paris. Lots of paperwork is required for this, and the business is going to struggle because local French people may not do the paperwork to just go to a restaurant. And also, tourists may not think of this at all. So do you think overall, will the Olympics help your business or not? Alors on pensait vraiment faire une très très belle saison et euh... So they were thinking great promises and now they saw they did minus 20% on the on June and right now at this point of July they're at minus 50%. 50 50 5 0 Wow. So the locals are leaving and the tourists are only coming for the 10 to 12 days of the Olympics. Mm. So it's a lot of loss opportunity costs yeah. for him. Uh, of having the Olympics, actually. That's fascinating. That's we're, so what, we're doing a lot of research, and that's what we're finding. The people that sell the Olympics to cities, they're saying it'll increase all this tourism, it'll increase all these things, but we're finding in research that the data is not showing that. Okay, so back to those claims from the IOC. The reason I'm sarcastic about them is because the data doesn't support these Luffy sales pitches. Cities tend to be over-optimistic about two things. One, how well their country is actually doing in the first place, and two, how much money the games will actually bring. So for example, when Rio won the bid for the 2016 Olympics back in 2009, Brazil was doing great. And they were ecstatic. This was their chance to show the world that they've arrived. But little did they know that one of the worst recessions would hit, which caused unemployment to shoot up, inflation to rise, and yet they still needed to invest billions of dollars into the Olympic venues, which created da 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 debt. A crazy fact about the way that this whole process works is that usually the leader that bids for the Olympics isn't the same leader that is responsible to host them because their term is usually up. Secondly, host cities often overestimate the amount of revenue that the tourism will actually bring in. The studies predicting the economic benefits that'll happen because of the Olympics are often done by the parties that really want the Olympics to happen. Also, studies show that the tourists that would normally come during this time actually avoid the Olympics because of the congestion and the craziness. And all of this just offsets the increase in tourism that the IOC expects. And I actually kind of noticed this when booking travel personally to Paris, like it's 10 days before the Olympics and flights and the hotel were extremely cheap. More specifically, a study showed that the net tourism in London in 2012 decreased by 5%, and Beijing in 2008, net tourism decreased by 20%. And Air France warned this year that in the beginning of July, they're expecting $180 million in decreased revenue because of the Olympics. They basically said that there's a significant avoidance in traveling to Paris internationally. Economists Stephen Billings and Scott Holliday claim that there's no long-term GDP impact with the Olympics coming to your city. What's your name? Mylan. Mylan? Tejas, what's your name? Fred. Fred? Pleasure, pleasure. Are you, are you excited for the Olympics? Uh, yes, one part I am exciting, but another part I am a little afraid. Uh, yes, uh, I think uh, there will be a lot of tourists and a lot of people, so... Uh, yes, really, really excited, because yeah. uh, I think it's going to be a mess. It's going to be a mess? Yes. Oh, oh. Why? About the security mm. uh, in the country, you know, the trouble since uh, 2015. Do you think Paris is ready for the Olympics? No, it's not ready. No? Don't Why not? worry, it's not ready. I tell you, it's not ready. I think, yeah. yeah? I think we think we are not because 
French people are very like always complaining and everything like this, but I think we're ready. As you can see, the city is really, you know, during uh, how do you say um, construction? Uh, construction. Yes, a lot of construction. Yes, lots of construction. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it it costs a lot to host the Olympics, right? Yeah. Do you think it's worth it for Paris? Yeah, I think worth it. Yeah, because <laughs> like you know, in France, sports is not uh, enough. It's not put in, in, in the spotlight. Yeah, mm. and I think we have to, to do this. Do you think it's worth it to host for the Olympics? Really not. No? Really not because uh, many of events uh, are not going to... He's worried that all we're building is not going to stay, so he's wondering if it's going to be a loss. Yeah. Do you think it's worth it for Paris? Yeah. Uh, it's going to be uh, a big deal mm. to, um, for the tourists to enjoy Paris, to see the real Paris, not the... Uh, the Paris in the movies, like uh, Emily in Paris. <laughs> uh, so for me, it's, it's a very cool, uh, cool thing. When uh, Shakespeare was ah. writing and came to Paris, yeah. he lived at the top of this building. That's oh, why really? people are queuing to see this library and eat there and really? be inspired by the Shakespeare. Wow. Aura. That's what they're going to think about the content closet one day. Yeah, they're going to have a gonna, cafe. Gonna, it's going to be the content closet cafe. Content, yeah. The sure. address is for We mentioned briefly that every single Olympic game since the 1960 has gone over budget. But how is this the case? And when I say over budget, I mean wildly over budget. Like, it's crazy. London budgeted $5 billion to host the 2012 Summer Games. The actual cost, $18 billion. Rio budgeted $14 billion to hold the 2016 Summer Games. The actual cost, $20 billion. And Sochi budgeted $10 billion to host the 2014 Winter Games. The actual cost ended up being $51 billion. Hosting the Olympics is a commitment that is nearly impossible to reverse once made. So cities must have facilities for all of the Olympic sports, which usually means the construction of new ones. They must have good roads, a public transportation system, and infrastructure to host all of these people. This basically means building a whole new town called the Olympic Village to hold 12,000 athletes. And finally, they must adhere to really strict security rules, which, by the way, has risen over sixfold since the 1990s and cost cities about $1.5 billion when hosting the Olympics. So cities are forced into a situation where they have to spend no matter what. And even though these are IOC rules, the cities are the ones who are responsible for any sort of cost overrun, basically signing over a blank check. Sadly, many of these new facilities will end up rotting and be empty. The aquatic center in Athens, vacant. Beijing's rowing and kayaking course, bone dry. And in Rio, the $700 million Olympic Village, which was then turned into luxury apartments, is failing to attract a buyer. So that too is just dormant. Sofia Sakharova, a Greek parliament member and former Olympian, says of the 2004 Athens Games venues, we are left with installations that are rotting away because we don't even have the money to maintain them. And again, the IOC is the ones who make the rules of what cities need to do. But they don't have any exposure to the costs that the cities have to accrue. And more and more cities are finally noticing this. Tell me in France, uh, can, most people only know French? Can, can this video be like a, a repetition of you breaking your cultural barriers? <laughs> yes! American! No, he's saying like, only 30% of French people know English? Ah, American! <laughs> That's crazy. That's... Learn English, people. What are we doing? <laughs> His food doesn't taste as good as he thinks. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, uh, we can keep it at that. Uh, okay. The, the mayor is uh, dirty. Dirty. The mayor is dirty? Okay. Are you going to jump in it now? Yeah, if I can, yeah. Yeah? It's clean. Not now. So, not now, but can, yeah, yeah you, you would. You'd swim yeah, now. Of course, yes. You are, you're like a ball of sunshine. <laughs> you know, I am. Man, the mustaches out here in Paris <laughs> are, are incredible. Jealous? Are you jealous of are the you? French mustache? The French mustache is here. Yeah. I can't even concentrate when I'm asking these questions. <laughs> like, that's a nice looking mustache. Yeah, you're, you're like six baguettes away from having a mustache. <laughs> so we, like, we just... is, is it in the correlation, number of baguettes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, all right, where are the people here at? So on September 13th, 2017, the IOC did the unthinkable. It awarded the 2028 Summer Games to Los Angeles without really calling for any other bids. Basically making it quite known that finding willing Olympic hosts is getting kind of difficult. Several cities withdrew their bid during 2022, 2024, and 2028 because of the cost. For example, this year's finalists, Budapest, Hamburg, and Rome, all dropped out, leaving only Paris and Los Angeles. The IOC knows that it's lost some market share and the future of the Olympic Games are kind of at risk. So some experts propose some solutions. Number one, the IOC should have some skin in the game. If costs are over budget, they should be responsible for a part of it. Number two, the bid to hosting timeline should be shortened. We don't want to have a repeat of what happened to Brazil. And we can't expect countries to know their financial situations that far out in advance. And third, the best one I've heard is consider semi-permanent hosts for the Olympics. Why are we reinventing the wheel when it comes to creating new stadiums, new infrastructure, and all this wasted money? You Seriously, you are incredible, man. Yeah, it's fine. You are incredible. Hey, I appreciate it. I have, a, I have a good time with you guys. Yeah. Alrighty. Any, any thoughts? Yeah, I was going to say final thoughts. I love Parisians. I want to be one. I don't even have anything against, like, nothing to say about the Olympics. It's just like, I feel like this, this last two hours is just about, like, how cool people in Paris are. So willing to talk. So open. <laughs> you catch me touristing? <laughs> Man, look at this thing. I'm gonna put a tourist. The good news is Paris is attempting to be the most sustainable host city to ever host the Olympics. And in January of 2024, the Games Committee has said that Paris so far is on track. But I guess we'll have to wait and see until after if that's the case. You know, this adventure was really interesting because in researching all this, we were almost like gaslighting ourselves. You'd assume when you hear the Olympics that tourism would increase and it's just an overall benefit to these cities. But then in our research, we found the exact opposite. And I found it really fascinating that talking to Parisians on the ground in Paris affirmed our data and research over these larger statements that I was made to believe all my life. I remember in that interview with the first business owner of him talking about how the month before they were down 20% in revenue, and this month already they're down 50% in revenue. I might be looking poised in the interview, but in my head I was like, whoa, that really is shocking. And I'm grateful to even have the opportunity to do things like this. So, if you've enjoyed this educational adventure, please like, comment, and subscribe would mean the world. And if this video gets 20,000 likes, I will jump into the river. And then now that the uh, River Seine is clean, are you gonna jump in? Would you swim in it now? <laughs> Would you swim? <laughs> no, 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 but uh, yeah. you, you are free to try if you want. Yeah, I'll jump right now. Can I? <laughs> as long as you guys don't arrest me, right? I'll go, I'll go try it out for everyone. Don't move, please. No, I won't move. <laughs> when police says When police says no move, move, I don't move. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tejas, let's go. <laughs> yeah. Good? Wow, you're, not, you're a nice French guy, huh? You don't yeah, yeah, yeah. complaining? Of course. <laughs> Put a like for this video. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. And comments. Yeah. Yeah.